I think as publishers, all of us can probably identify when there's a new author that comes to us and we can kind of see right away this person <laughs> is the real deal yeah. and they're going to stick around and they're going to keep writing. Yeah. really like to support authors' careers. We, we love the individual book, but uh, we foster the careers of the poets who we select. Not only serving the writer really well, but serving the reader really well, the other side of the equation. So um, being smart about how we get books out into the world, making certain that we're supporting authors. We're really active in the poetry community and we constantly go to readings and we constantly read journals. And I think mostly what we're looking for in authors is like, a deep connection to poetry. The only reason they're coming to Hawthorne because we're so small is because that book couldn't sell to one of the big five. And I love finding those kinds of books and then giving them an audience and putting them out there and having them do well. I'm probably something of a, a naive sucker, but I, but I believe that there is an audience for selling poetry books. I make a case that poetry can be sold, that it can be read, that it can be a part of, of a larger discussion. We're always inspired by um, presses that kind of build a community and keep a community of authors going where the authors start to influence each other. That's one of the, my favorite things about running the press is like it's the sense of family and the sense of like welcoming people to the family. We all get into this because we get excited by work that other people have done and, and I like looking both at you know smaller presses and larger ones for ideas that I want to steal, that I want to copy, that get me excited the way I did when I first, I was when I first got into books. One of the other things that I was inspired by for Future Tense was uh, record labels, and I was really inspired by independent record labels and how they presented themselves. You know, they're just people like this on the other side of that, that electronic divide. Um, you know, we, we all came to books because we love books, we love writing, we love being engaged and surprised and, and lit a fire. One of my biggest pet peeves is when somebody wants to bypass our associate editor to get to me because they see me at the top of the masthead. There's no quicker way to get, you know, pushed off the side of my desk than that. When you're starting off, those kind of questions about money and survival are really key because if you start off and you print too many copies of your first book and you don't have distribution or you don't have publicity, your author's not talking about his book that you published, that can be a, a real uh, nightmare and setback. And, you, you know, that might be your first and last book on your press. A lot of, you know, the, the small press, press industry is, is run on the, the sacrifices, often of the founders, of the staffs. Um, the puzzle that I'm always concerned with is how do you make this an ongoing thing that your press survives you. The, these are our legacy, these books. Um, we, our whole goal is to make books that will be read for many years, and I'm sure that's true of most presses, but we're way more focused on that than we are focused on whether the books will be read now.